what's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. I'm Ben and this is my 2022 Gen 3 KLR 650 and I expect a lot out of this motorcycle. I take this thing on everything from highways to single track and everything in between. The issue that I've ran into though is that when you stick extremely aggressive off-road tires on a big heavy bike like this with super long extended raked out forks, you end up with, well, a little bit of a nervous ride on the highway, especially when you load this thing down with gear. Of course, I could just stick a different set of tires on here, and I do actually have a different tire that I'm eventually gonna try out on the front, but before I swap it out for that, I wanted to try out one of these Eagle Mike fork braces. I've heard about these for years, even back when I had my Gen 2 KLR650, I had considered installing one of these. Essentially what this is gonna do is sort of connect the big long fork tubes to each other and not allow as much sort of free play. And we'll hopefully get rid of the sort of wild handling characteristics on the highway. But I've also heard that this can drastically improve the off-road handling characteristics and sort of wild handling that a big heavy bike like this can get in the sand. So today I'm gonna throw this on the bike, then we'll take it out and do sort of a wide range of experiments, everything from highway riding to off-road riding, and we'll see how this thing does. Clean up some of the debris that I've got around my fork tube here where it meets the boot. I'm gonna kind of give this a little bit of a twist just to sort of break it free. There we go. And then this will just kind of peel off of the little channel down here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is remove these side clamps here. So that's gonna be the two fasteners on each side. like that. Next, I'm going to loosen up the four fasteners here, but I'm just going to do one single rotation on each fastener. We don't want to pull them all the way out. That just kind of loosens everything up here so we can get the brace in. So this is sort of how it interfaces with the top of the fork tube there, a little bit of a section view. And then I'm going to stick a little bit of blue Loctite on these fasteners. I'm not actually tightening anything down here yet. I'm just gonna get everything kind of loosely fit into position. Same deal over on the other side here. So the instructions say to make sure that this is lined up with your tire. I'm not 100% sure what that means, but I would assume they're saying that the flat parts on each side of the tube clamps need to, I guess, be parallel to the tire itself. And then just kind of make sure that this is evenly placed in the center. And also uh, I can kind of use that as an indication to see whether or not these side pieces are turned one way or the other. Gently kind of snug these all in place. Start with the sides. So again, with these, I'm not going crazy tight, not really even snugging down, just kind of snugging the fastener head down tight so there isn't a bunch of slop between the parts. So now I'm gonna push the bike upright, grab the front brake and give it a few bounces on the front forks. This will just kind of move everything around into a spot that is mutually agreeable between all of the parts. Now, if you guys have seen my other videos, you know I don't bust out a torque wrench very often. However, for these fasteners that I'm about to tighten down, I think it is very important. I have heard of people over torquing these fasteners and then having issues with their fork tube sort of being out around and then leaking fluid. So obviously that's not something you wanna mess with. I would say it's definitely worth investing in a little torque wrench like this, just so you've got it for stuff like this. So the instructions recommend 70 inch pounds, 65. 70. So I'm gonna hit the outer ones first here until this clicks. Same thing over on the opposite side here. And then I'll just do the four up here in sort of a crisscross pattern. 
And of course, always make sure to set your torque wrench back to whatever it recommends. This one says 20, just so you're not putting any stress on it sitting in storage, and that way it'll stay accurate for longer. So with all four of those done, then we can just snug up the locking nuts on the bottom here. These are a nylock nuts, so I'm not gonna put any Loctite on them to begin with, they should be fine. I'm gonna stick a wrench on the top side here. I won't be doing anything other than just providing a little bit of back pressure as I tighten this down. These doesn't really say anything about how tight they're supposed to be, so I guess we'll just kind of snug it down and hope for the best. So now with that all tightened down and ready to go, the last thing that I've got to do here is just fit my boot over the top of the bracket here. It seems like that was really pretty easy to do. Same thing on the opposite side here. There we go. So it looks like these are going to be sort of squished a little bit more than usual, but I guess it really shouldn't be too big of an issue. I guess one thing that I'm not really a huge fan of is the fact that we're going to get dirt and debris and stuff right inside of these holes, and that's going to end up sitting right on top of our seal here and actually just kind of down in here. And the reason that this is a problem now and wasn't before is because originally these holes would have been down around here somewhere since the bottom of the seal sat just right on top of this little lip here. So there we go, all mounted up and snug down, ready to hit the highway and the trail for some testing. But before we do that, I just kind of wanted to show you guys what I had in here for spacing between my sort of wore out D-Sport here and at the bottom of the bracket. There's a little bit of room, probably not enough for my grip studs in there but uh, a little bit anyways. Hopefully we don't have any issues with mud packing up in there. You are able to stick a fender on the top of this with some trimming and some fasteners that thread down into the top of the brace in the center here. We've got the holes right there. And I do have a fender that I might stick on here in a later video, but for today, I wanna just do a direct comparison. So let's put some gear on, throw a leg over this thing and take it out for a rip and see what the fork brace does. So first test run out on the highway here will creep up to 70 miles an hour indicated on the Garmin New V60 LM GPS. So wait for grandma to get past us here. The only time that I would really run into an issue is of course if I'm you know, making fast lane changes or if I, I get a blast from a semi passing me or whatever, uh, or I can kind of give the tank uh, a bit of a shake with my knees and it'll break loose and wobble. Maybe that does clean it up a bit faster. It might kind of bring it back into line a little bit quicker, but I don't know. I, I was really hoping that it would kind of shore that up and not make the bike feel so, I don't know, loose and wild, I guess. So a little bit disappointed there, but we've got plenty of testing to do yet. So let's see how this handles a little bit of off-road riding. All right, so we are up here at beautiful Harrison Hills. Hopefully we will have the Insta360 view. You never know with that camera though. And if it doesn't work this time, I'm not refilming it. So I did quick stick some electrical tape over those holes while we're riding trails here. I don't know what my plan is as far as keeping this thing. And I certainly don't want to pile a bunch of dirt in there if I'm just going to take it back off anyways. So let's hit the trail here and we'll see what this thing will do. We'll see if I can stay out front of the Tenere 700 there. Jerry's along for the ride. He's hanging a little bit low there. <laughs> well, I think we successfully lost the T7. I've got to say, man, I don't know that I could even tell what it's doing different. And maybe it has nothing to do with the brace itself. It's all in my head, maybe. I, I honestly don't know. But 
it really seems like I'm able to rip these trails harder. And like I said, I don't know exactly why. It doesn't necessarily feel better, but apparently, I mean, it's given me the confidence to rip, I think, a lot harder than I normally would be. So I guess I can't, can't complain there. I can't really tell you exactly how it helps, but it seems like it helps. I don't know, I'm hauling ass. Yeah, you are. I can't tell what the difference is. I mean, it doesn't really feel better, but it sure lets me go fast. I don't know. Wow. It's probably all in here. <laughs> Oh well, placebo effect works too. My elbows are not going to be happy with me if I go down, but man, it feels so much better to have this jersey on. What do you guys wear on really hot days? I've got my, whoa, uh, cotton and Kevlar. Uh, flannel with armor in it in the back bag here. That's what I wore up here on the road. Now, usually I try to get away with that off road, but it's so darn hot, and I knew I was going to be pushing this thing. I guess I really just need some some elbow protection. Maybe I just need to get some slip-on guards, and then I'll be set and just rock one of these jerseys all the time. They're so nice; they let the air through. So supposedly this is gonna help me in the sand and I mean like I said just in general I don't know I'm I'm just feeling like I'm ripping hard to, harder than usual today and I mean sort of sort of intentionally just to, to see what I can you know get out of the bike with this this brace on here but I don't know I'm really having a hard time putting it into words I guess uh, but as far as the sand goes nah, I don't know I mean it's been a while since sand has really given me any big problems. I mean, I usually just kind of just kind of stay loose and let the bike go through it. Obviously putting an input where I need to to keep it going, which I mean, is what you want to do. But no, it does feel better. It definitely does. So the bike still shifts around. And I guess maybe that's, that's a good way to think about this thing. I mean, just like any mod you do to a bike, it, it's not going to change what type of bike you're on. I mean, this is still a big old heavy KLR 650. Uh. No, a side by side did? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think there is a definite improvement. However, it's not huge. Just like in the sand here. I mean, it just feels like it handles just a little bit better. It's not so wild. It doesn't. When it starts to walk, it doesn't walk so hard or so fast. Um, I don't know, you just, you feel like you're in more, more in control and, and like it's, I, I don't know, not, not as squirrely, I guess. And I, I suppose I don't need to say anything more than that. I'm trying to come up with better words than that. But I mean, I think, I think that's really it. I would say, kind of take into consideration what I've said, decide whether or not any of the stuff that I claim that this is going to help you out with it is really important to you and, and worth the money to, to stick into one of these and uh, if you're interested there will be an affiliate link down in the description if you use that link it doesn't cost you anything extra but it helps you make more videos like this and I always appreciate that when you guys use those links to buy any gear you need it doesn't have to be this this specific piece it could be anything else uh, it definitely is uh, one of the only things that that makes this economically possible for me to, to continue doing so if you guys appreciate the videos I would appreciate it if you'd consider using the link before buying gear but until next time guys take care stay safe stay swanky get out enjoy this absolutely beautiful world any chance you get I just realized Jerry doesn't know I pulled in here I better go out there <laughs> all right shut the cameras down